The Diamondbacks return to Chase Field for a much needed homestand. They battled night in and night out over the last three weeks, playing 16 of 19 games on the road. After a miraculous comeback in St. Louis, the Diamondbacks went to Houston and swept the Astros. Over the next 10 days, they'll face off against the Miami Marlins, the San Diego Padres, and the Cincinnati Reds. Now is the time for the Diamondbacks to move up in the National League West standings. And we have all the games on Fox Sports Arizona. Back home in the great state of Arizona. Finally, for the Arizona Diamondbacks, the long road trek is over. And tonight, the Diamondbacks kick off a 10-game homestand. They've got the Miami Marlins in town for the first of four. Quick look at the standings. Diamondbacks start the night four and a half behind the first place Dodgers and the Dodgers and Giants hooking up tonight in L.A. Hello again, everybody. I'm Greg Schulte, along with Mark Grace. Good to have you back. How was the, the vacay? It was wonderful. Got to got to watch some good baseball while uh, while you guys were on the road. Attaboy. Four and two, you'll take that, won't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. And that long trek, Gracie, of what was it, uh, 16 and 19 on the road. Dimebacks end up going 10 and six. And played some good baseball. They they got the things done that they needed to accomplish. And Kirk Gibson was talking about that before that long those two long trips, Greg. That is, they had to start handling their business better on the road, and they did that. I think a big reason why they did that: the starting pitching, and then the bats woke up on the road too, and that was good to see. Especially they put on a pretty good show in Houston. And now they're home, and they'll face the Miami Marlins, the San Diego Padres. The Cincinnati Reds, some tough tests ahead, obviously, but, uh, you know, they're home and they play so well here at home. They do do that, and I think they also understand that they had to sweep the Houston Astros, but now the competition gets better, Greg. These are not the Houston Astros. These are the Miami Marlins. They have underachieved this year under Ozzie Guillen, no question about that. I think a lot of people were picking this team to win the East. Instead, well, Diamondbacks are looking at bang on them a little bit. Brad will be back. Brad Steinke when we come back. Diamondbacks glad to be home. Oh, boy, are they.
AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T Rethink Possible. McDonald's, McDonald's, I'm loving it. And welcome back to Diamondbacks Baseball Live on Fox Sports Center. As you know, lately seeing the D-backs here at home has been a rarity. 16 of their last 19 games away from home, but tonight the schedule finally starts to turn in their favor. The start of a crucial 10-game homestand, crucial in the fact that if they want to be a factor in the West, they have to take care of business. It's our Geico quote of the game. Miggy talking about the energy this team has coming off that four-game win streak on the road. It's going to be interesting, you know, it's going to be fun. Uh, we just got to go out there and keep playing the way we played these, these last four games. And, uh, and it's going to be fine. You just, we just got to do it. We know what we have to do, but, you know, at the end of the day, we got to win the game tonight. So, um, you know, that holds phrase, taking one game at a time, really is, uh, is important for us the next few weeks. And tonight it all gets going with the first of four straight games against the Miami Marlins, including that doubleheader on Wednesday. It's a battle of lefties on the hill this evening. Game one of this series, Joe Saunders go for the, goes for the Arizona Diamondbacks against Mark Burley for the Marlins. He of the perfect game a couple of years ago. We have the call for you live. Mark Grace, Greg Schulte next live on Fox Sports Arizona. Gila River Casino's proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Well, that looks good. Chase Field, we've been showing you a lot of ballparks. Not many have been Chase Field of late. Well, the Diamondbacks back home now. Start this long 10 game homestand. And Ozzie Guillen, not uh, the first season he wanted with his new club, the Miami Marlins. Let's take a look at his lineup tonight. Former Diamondback Emilio Bonifacio back off the DL in center. Donovan Solano. Jose Reyes hitting third these days. Carlos Lee, the cleanup hitter. John Carlos Stanton. He's good. Justin Ruggiano. John Buck. Donnie Murphy. And the veteran lefty, Mark Burley. Our Arizona Ford starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks tonight. Gracie is Joe Saunders. Yeah, the best way to describe Joe Saunders is he is just solid. He's also a guy that knows this team and has had big success, hit probably his finest hour as a major league pitcher. A three-hit shutout in Miami earlier this season, so he's certainly going to be a confident left-hander against this Miami Marlins club. So here we go, kicking off 10 at home. 
Diamondbacks look like they're ready to go. First pitch of the night. It's upstairs and we are underway. You want to come out and you want to set a tone for this long home stand, and that is if you're Joe Saunders, come out and try to have a quick inning, and that includes getting the speedy Bonifacio at the top of the order. And we, got Jimmy Joyce. Joyce. Yeah. Yeah. we got Jimmy. You always know when Jimmy <laughs> Joyce is behind home plate. You can definitely hear it. You'll hear him in your living room all night. You can see they're up on the grass at first and third. Chopper to short. You got to be quick on this. The throw. And out is Goldsmith. Was able to keep the toe on the bag. One down. Elmore laid back on that ball. Sometimes that can be dangerous. Kind of like Bonifacio running. And when you do lay back, you have to be a little quicker with your throw. It's a nice toe dance over there by Paul Goldschmidt. As you can see, he keeps that toe on there. Good call at first base from Lance Barrett. Is Donovan Solano. He's their second baseman now. He's been playing quite regularly. There's a pitch fouled out of play. Rockies and the Marlins just split four. That's where Miami came in from, Denver. Well, the Diamondbacks went four and two through. St. Louis and Houston sweeping the Astros over the weekend. Brown ball is sure they're going to keep testing Elmore, I guess. He's retired the first two. Let's take a look at the rest of the Diamondbacks defense. You've seen Elmore along with Goldsmith on the infield. Kubel Young and Upton in the outfield left to right. Johnson back at third. Elmore Hill and Goldsmith and Montero behind the plate. Catching Joe Saunders. Johnson only got one start in the uh, three games against Houston. Bat's been scuffling. He's a little cooled bit. off a yeah. little bit since that rocket start in Los Angeles and Pittsburgh. Here's Jose Reyes hitting third these days. Down, he takes a strike. He's hitting 283. Just recently had a long hitting streak. Yeah. Yeah, I was stopped of all places in New York against the Mets. 26 games. Since July 13th, he's hit at a 329 clip. 17 extra base hits, 25 runs scored. Now Saunders has gotten two ground ball outs to start the ball game, and I know he enjoys that. There's a ground ball down to third, and that gets by the diving. Johnson on into the corner. Harris is going to have a couple. Move up with it. He's going to try for third. There's a throw. He is out at third base. I don't know why he tried for three, but for some reason he did. Because that was bonehead base running. That's why. Unbelievable. And he was out. Kubel get an assist, as will Elmore. And Johnson applied the tag. Now the Diamondbacks are out of it here in the first.
by Jose Reyes that ended that top of the first for the Marlins. I mean, the play is right in front of him. It, it, it's, yeah, you can understand sometimes if it's down the right field line, you're, you have your back to the ball. That play is just right in front of him. That ball's waiting on him. A great relay by Kubel and Elmore. And just, you're, you're already in scoring position. You, you, you can run like a deer if you're Jose Reyes. It just, that was just silly, silly base running, foolish base running, and the Diamondbacks will take it. And I think we saw the dugout there talking with Kubel, who was waiting for his at bat this day. It looked like Alan Trout was shaking his head as if to say, I can't believe he did that. So chalk up another yeah. assist for Jason Kubel. Chris Young takes a strike two and one here. Mark Burley, he works fast. If you blink, you'll miss a pitch. Right back to you, Gracie. Almost. He's got a perfect game and a no-hitter to his credit, but uh, this year, 10 and 11. Not this year he doesn't have those. <laughs> That's what he does. A, an assortment of fastballs and breaking balls and change-ups. Anything, anything from about 73 to about 86 miles an hour. Not a hard thrower at all. Dimebacks knocked him around pretty good back on April 30th. Five innings, eight hits, seven runs. Four of those were earned. He gave up two home runs. Dimebacks won that game 9-5. And Young hits a high fly ball. Center field. It's going to be caught. Should be caught by Defacio. Has it. One down. Let's take a look at the Mazda starting lineup for the Diamondbacks here tonight. You just saw Young bat. Now it's going to be Hill and then Kubel. Goldsmith batting cleared up. Upton still fit. Montero six. Johnson seventh. Elmore eighth. And Saunders ninth. For Gibson. His ball club go 10 and 6 on that stretch of 16 and 19 on the road. 14 games above 500 now in this career. Diamondbacks three over 500 this year. He'll back in the uh, two spot the last couple of games. He had third one ball game recently. He had a bang up series against Houston. But several Diamondbacks did. He went seven for 12. Three home runs and five runs batted in. That's back up the middle, but Solano had him play perfectly and cross body throw for the nice play on the out. Nice play by Solano there, and that's why you have scouting reports. They know that Aaron Hill is a pull hitter. That ball right back over the bag. But Solano right there, he makes a nice backhand play. Gets Hill by a couple of steps. Good play. And now Kubel will bat. Burley throws it up and in. Again, Burley just gets the baseball and toes the rubber, gets his sign and throws. Gotta love playing behind guys like this. Since 2001, he has 167 wins. That's third in the major leagues. His start 386, that's first. Leading in innings among the leaders in complete games. Every time a Diamondback player hits a home run this season, full Gnomes will donate $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. A 2 2 here on Kubel. 3 2. Well, just because you get a, a three ball count on. Burley, that does not mean you're going to get a fastball. He will throw you anything, anytime. Look at those innings, Gracie. Boy, that's awesome. <laughs> There's a drive, way back, and way out of here. Over on Kubel, one up and down the bats. Welcome on. Well, that one almost hit the letters in Uptown out there in right field. My goodness, that was a long, long home run off the bat of Jason Kruber. And it's a full home run. Another $150 going to St. Louis on the Mount Rescue Association. And you had just said that, didn't you? Yeah. 3-2 fastball right down the middle. Belt high, Jason Kubel. 
does not miss it. He gets every ounce of it. This one almost got up to the Circle K strikeout meter out there. My goodness, Jason. He got the big hug there from far, as you saw. So what? Nothing. Diamondbacks. Goldsmith on the ground towards short, cut off by the third baseman. And on to first is Murphy with the play, and that'll end the inning. But a long home run by Kubel. Number 26 in RBI 78. The Diamondbacks strike first. Home run in one inning. Not a bad night work. He's only uh, been out there briefly. One nothing Diamondbacks. Carlos Lee takes a strike. Former Astro. He played his first game with the Marlins on July 5th. And that one bounces to the backstop by Joe Saunders. It'll be Lee, Stanton, and Ruggiano. Here in the Miami second inning. Well, folks, if we seem a little distracted, it's because we are. Our stage manager to the star, Scott Snyder, has evidently taken a blowtorch to the to the home booth here. Something. <laughs> That's a pace hit to left field. By Lee to start the inning. I was wondering what so, that was. So if we end up burning <laughs> alive here shortly, just know uh, we love all of you. Lee becomes the uh, first base runner of the night for the Marlins. And he's had a good career against Lee has against Saunders. That's his seventh hit and 15 of bats. Well, you got to watch it with this guy. He can really <laughs> swing the bat. Well, I'm telling you, Joe Saunders, he challenged the big fella. You can see he's smiling. Yeah. I like it when a guy challenges me like that. Well, he got two intentional walks yesterday in uh, the game at Denver against the Rockies. Now he's going to try to come inside on him. Good pitch. Mm. Might, not, might be a ball, but that's still a good pitch. He's not going to hurt you in there. You know, these big guys, Greg, you know, they like to get those big arms extended. I mean, those telephone poles sticking out his sleeves there. Two and one now, he's falling behind. Stan got off to a miserable start. But then came the month of May, and he was the National League Player of the Month. He had 12 home runs. Tied Josh Hamilton for the most in the major leagues. Had 30 RBIs and hit 343, and he's run the count to three and oh, a three and one here.
down to third. That is a foul ball. And so went down to second. Well, he had some long home runs against the Rockies. Did he ever? And he has got some kind of power. And we got that one. That was that was a, a cheapy. Yeah, that was the little one. That was pretty good. This one was the best. One to grow on. 494. Longest in the majors this season. And he's one of those guys that when he hits it, you watch the opposing pitcher, and they immediately just look down. Big Full. pitch right here for Saunders. Full on count. Three and two. Yeah. Especially after the leadoff hit by Lee. And he struck him out, tied him up inside, and Joe gets a strikeout, his first of the night. And that's what we said. That, that's the key. That's that's the plan of attack against a guy like Stanton. You've got to crowd him. You've got to stay in on him. And don't let him get those big arms extended, and that's exactly what Joe Saunders did. So one out now for Justin Ruggiano. He's made the major leagues look pretty easy, hadn't he? Yeah. He's played really well. He's hit. 333 since June 20th. He's got 17 doubles, 10 home runs. Played in 63 games, only 182 at bats. That's awesome. He hits one down to third, and that'll go on through between third and short. Lee's kind of a station to station guy, so he ambles into second base. On the hit by Ruggiano. Well, Carlos Lee is a very good hitter. But if he's not careful, sometimes he might get forced out from left field. Joe's given up three hits now. Two in this inning. But he's still got that old double play ball in hand. If he can get John Buck here. But Buck has hit the Diamondbacks pretty well in his career. And a ground ball to short. There's that double play. He's good time. And that'll get Joe out of the city. Saunders gives up two hits, gets a strike out of Stan, a double play off the bat of Buck. On the Kubel home run, the Diamondbacks on top. Miller time later today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. One nothing Diamondbacks on top on a Kubel home run the first inning. That probably should have counted for two, shouldn't have it? As long as it was. I agree. Here's Upton to lead it off. He takes outside ball one. These two have some history, don't they? Good history for Justin Upton. Back in April, he had a long home run in Miami off of Mark Burley. Upton in the center field, but on by Fascio right off the end of the bat. One out. The 
Burley's given up a lot of home runs since 0-1, 290 now with the one tonight. Actually, I think I'm one ahead of myself. 289. He's right at the top of the list. Home runs given up. Here's Montero. Miggy uh, had a good road trip. He's had a good season. 72 runs batted in now. And he just continues to stack the good seasons, doesn't he? Yeah, and he's gotten better since he signed the contract. That's refreshing to hear, isn't it? Yeah. Sure is. Now one of those take the money and run. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, a guy that didn't take the money and run, but took the money and got hurt is in Boston, Carl Crawford. Yeah. You know, that's a shame. You know, What's Tommy happened John, to him? Huh? Yeah, he's going to have to miss the rest of this year. One and two on Montero. He had six hits on the road trip. Four more walks. His on-base percentage continues to climb. Drove in four runs. That's what he hit on the road trip, 375. And pretty much plays every day. Although when Will Nieves has gotten a chance to sub in for Miggy, he's done a nice job. Filling in for Henry Blanco. And Montero skies it to the left side. And the third base now. Foul ground makes the catch. And that's out number two. So Montero fouls to Donnie Murphy. Chris Johnson's bat is, Gracie said, has cooled off. It was really hot when he joined the Diamondbacks. He had five home runs in his first day games. He's driven in 18 and 17 games for the D-backs. I think he certainly deserves a little slack because I don't think any human being could keep up the pace he was keeping up there his first 10 games or so. Well, he helped the Diamondbacks through that road trip through L.A., Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. Oh, did he ever. Ryan Wheeler got two starts in Houston. Johnson back in there. He is actually 0 for his last 17. I think what you're seeing with Johnson right now, and it's it's what happens when a lot of young hitters start to struggle. You, you, they start expanding the strike zone. They start trying to get four and five hits in one at bat. And he just needs to slow things down, let the game come to him. And a lot of times that's easier said than done. Yeah, and, and the best the best way, in my opinion, was, boy, just try to swing at the strikes and take the balls. Easier said than done, though. Yeah, he really got fooled on that. Carlos Leo gobbled it up. This inning very easy. For Mark Burley, we played two here on the Kubalom run. Diamondbacks lead at 1-0.
game. Brady Ellison here. Look at this. Dead on. Got the baseball. That was the uh, first pitch here tonight. Let's see your form here. Bullseye. <laughs> How you doing, young man? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. Brady is the uh, silver medalist in archery at the 2012 Olympic Games. Just completed in London. He's back with us. And here at the ballpark tonight. That kind of neat doing that uh, out of the field tonight. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, shooting in the Olympics is one thing, but shooting in baseball stadiums <laughs> is like all America. So it's really a great honor for me to be able to come out and do it. Well, out here. How much fun was that over there? It was a lot of fun. I mean, it, the Olympics, the emotions and stuff that go into it, it's hard to put in the words. I mean, it's just an absolutely amazing experience. How long have you been uh, involved in archery? Did um, you pick my, up your first bow? My whole life. I have pictures of me in diapers shooting little plastic <laughs> bows and stuff, but I've been training full-time since January of 2006. Wow. And preparing, obviously, for uh, what transpired. And uh, you're, you're out of Glendale. You're still very young. More Olympics to come? Yeah, I definitely have a four-year plan going in the Rio already, and uh, we'll uh, probably take a little time off the rest of this year and then keep going on uh, early next year. Good for you. Now, talk to us about the differences between shooting targets and shooting things that uh, if, if you miss, it will kill you. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's a big difference in, in hunting and obviously in, in target shooting. Um, you know, we stand up and we shoot at a target all day long, and it's right. stationary. And, um, you know, wind, rain, whatever is we're shooting. When you're hunting, um, you have to be a lot more careful. You always want to be care You want to be more picky with your shots, you know. Sure. Less wind. Stay downwind. Yeah, and yeah. the most eth ethical shot, you know, you don't want the animal facing you. You don't want them to know you're there so they can't jump a string or anything so you can put the cleanest shot on them you can. I see. Now, recurve archery? Recurve archery, is that what it was? Uh, yeah, I shoot recurve in all the Olympic-type stuff, okay. but uh, I shoot a compound hunt. Now, what, what's recurve? Uh, recurve is like what I was shooting down on okay. the field today okay. is a modern-day recurve, and a compound has, um, it's a little bit shorter, has cams and pulleys on it. Uh, they're a lot faster and more accurate. It's a foul ball. Is that a hook on your hat? It is a hook I, on my hat. I was wondering what. Man, I'm, I want to be your friend. <laughs> you, you're like a really good shot, and you might hook me too. How you yeah. doing, buddy? <laughs> Here's the bow. Yep. So this is a recurve. Now, would, a, would, would somebody like Greg or I, would we be able to go to, into a any sporting goods store and go get a bow like that? Probably not. Not like that one, no, but uh, you could go into a lot of them and buy compounds. I mean, Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops here right. in the Valley have them, and there's a, a lot of good archery shops here in the Valley also that be able to hook you up with everything you need. Now, how old were you when you shot your first bear? I was with 11. With a bow and arrow. I haven't shot one with my bow yet. Oh, oh okay. Got you. Yeah, I shot one when I was 11 with my rifle. Really? Yeah. 11 years old? Yep. I'm 48. I want no part of that. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm actually looking at this year trying to find a bear to go chase with my bow. Well, listen, Brady, we uh, we thanks for thanks for joining us. Congratulations. I'd love, I'd love, to, come, I'd so love to come with you one of these days. Yeah, thank you guys so All much. Right, I really man. appreciate it. Silver thank medalist you. in the Olympics, Brady Ellison out of Glendale. Congratulations again, young man. Thank you.
One of the Diamondbacks on home run by Jason Kubel in the first inning. Mark Burley out there ready to go. And Jake Elmore takes a strike. Elmore made his uh, Diamondback debut on August 11th against the Nationals. That was kind of cool meeting that young yeah. man, wasn't it? Yeah, good kid. Yeah. And he is a kid. He is a kid, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you don't get to meet too many people that are, well, he can say he is the second best in the world yeah. this really year. Awesome. And probably going to be better than that four years from now. Well, Elmore tried to push one up the first baseline. He's fortunate that ball fell foul before Buck was able to make a grab. So it's just a foul ball. Third inning brought to you by Miller Light. Visit local retailers. Text road trip to the Miller Taste team at 620 620. For your chance to win one of three interdivision rival flyway trips this summer. Sally had a good time. And we talked to him. He didn't make the opening event because they had to perform the next right. day. Yeah, the opening missed, ceremony. Missed out on all the fun. Man, you <laughs> want to stay in the Olympic Village, yeah. too. Meet all the other athletes. No more hit a foul to the Diamondback well, dugout. That knocks somebody that, off that, that dugout step. the boys. I guess everybody's all right. Anytime you see smiles, that's a good thing. Oh, man. Tell you what, if you hit Paul Goldschmidt in his kneecap, that's a good way to get released. There is a little opening right there in the middle of that dugout where the players come mm -hmm. out. And you can see where uh, Goldschmidt's sitting. We'll keep you posted on that giant Dodger game a little bit later on as that one gets rolling. They're in L.A. tonight. Diamondbacks with a win here would gain on somebody. There's a sinking liner to the left, and that's going to fall for a hit for Elmore. That's a good way to start because you got your number eight hitter on to start the inning. Yep. A lot of three ball counts here from Mark Burley. This time, just right off the end of the bat, it goes. A broken bat single out into left field. And that's going to give Joe Saunders an opportunity to drop a bunt here and help himself with a sacrifice. Right there, folks, that's the bunt sign Matt just gave. <laughs> uh, In one way or another, right? <laughs> Matty and I went over the signs before the game, and he told me that's the bunt sign. Not a babe. I'm doing your homework. I like that. And Saunders up there. He's going to swing the bat. Takes you got to mix it up. <laughs> well, right, right now you want to test Carlos Lee at first base. You want to bunt it to first base. If you do that, Elmore has good speed. It should be an easy sacrifice. Diamondbacks have four pitchers with six sacrifice bunts. Saunders is one of those. And he bunts the third. He never even looked at second. He took the out at first. Sacrifice good. Seventh sacrifice for Joe. Well, Joe decided to go to the third base side with it, even though Murphy was kind of in his belt buckle, but he dropped down such a dandy that it didn't even matter. I'll be honest with you. I don't think Carlos Lee has any inkling to want to come in and charge a bunt. You see, he's yeah, still at first he's base. He's at first base taking the throw. <laughs> That's so he, he has no desire to come in and charge a bunt play. He's a lot they like, I call him Ferdinand the Bull. He just, he just, when he's not in the batter's box, he just kind of likes to sit there and smell the flowers. <laughs> Top of the order now, Chris Young. Chance to add another run here. Young fly to center first time up. Hit the ball pretty well. Here's Carlos Lee. This is not the way you really want to do bunt attempts. Oh, okay, that's enough. I'll just hit back to first. I'll take the throw. I'll give me, I'll give me a put out, that's, right? That's not really charging with much passion. <laughs> he has had a great career, though, Carlos Lee. He continues to drive in runs at a great pace. Anytime the Diamondbacks scores six or more, Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink. That's between 4 and 6 p.m. the following day. At participating locations. 
Well, if the Diamondback season is now turning around, all you have to do is go back to that game in St. Louis with one out of the ninth inning. The home run by Goldschmidt on that nine pitch at bat. And, and then, then Young the follow with pitch. the game winner. They have not lost since then. Oh, Young took a call third strike. Looked like a pretty good pitch. It was. He didn't Young think so. It. Young knew it. And that's because that's just a perfect pitch to the inside point. Two outs now for Aaron Hill. First strikeout for Burley. Burley is uh, out of St. Louis, the St. Louis area, and there was thought at one time that when free agency came about, he might join the Cardinals. Back to the box is Hill. Burley throws him out. So he had a sacrifice move to runner in the scoring position, but Young and Hill failed to get him home. One nothing after three D backs. in part by Valley Chevy, who's your everyday hero. Nominate an everyday hero at valleychevy.com or facebook.com slash valleychevy. Jack of the Box. Get the All-American Jack combo at Jack of the Box. It's a no-nonsense burger with fries and a drink for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. London Bridge London and Lake Bridge. Hansu, yeah. Were, was that one of your stops? That was uh, one of my many stops while I was on Finally vacation. got to the Grand Canyon. What would you think? Yeah, you know what? It's everything I thought it would be and then some. <laughs> Here we go, top of the fourth inning. Marlins have actually uh, hit the Diamondbacks 3-2, to two, but Kubel's home run, the only run of the game. Solano will lead it off. And then Reyes, Lee, and Stanton. Off the end of the bat. While Burley works fast, Joe Saunders is not uh, very slow. I mean, he gets that what. ball. He goes right at it. This is a this is a getaway day dream right here. You hate to have this one on the first game. Ooh, he just missed there. Don't forget the doubleheader coming up on Wednesday. These two teams, 12:40 and 6:40 here. Two two now. Solano grounded to the shortstop. Elmore is first time up. That's a floater to center, and that's going to fall for a hit. It looked like he jammed him a little bit. He certainly did, but the reason that ball was able to fall in safely is because it was up in the strike zone. When the ball's up in the strike zone, even though you jam a hitter, it's above the belt. Those things will be lofted out there into no man's land. If that ball's down, Around the knees or just above the knees, it'll just be a little simple ground broken back ground ball. 
Well, here's Reyes who doubled into the left field corner in the first inning, but got greedy and tried to stretch it into a triple and was thrown out. He bloops this one. Look at that. That's going to fall for a hit. Slotto didn't get a real good read. He's going to try for third. He'll want to have a play, though. He gets it back into second in his first and third. Nobody out. Two little cue balls here into the outfield off Saunders. It's got to be frustrating for Joe. Yeah. This time it was off the end of the bat. Not. That's a much better pitch. That's down. And he just right off the end of the bat it goes. So two broken bats. And it's first and third. Nobody. And Joe Saunders all of a sudden trying to hang on for dear life here to keep the lead. And now he's got Lee and then Stanton and Ruggiano to deal with. And they sacrifice a run here for a double play ball off this guy's bat, Lee. Lee first time up. Single to left. Oh, a little bit of a high throw. Lee has hit into nine double plays this year. Two and oh. And you can see why Joe might try and tap dance around this guy a little bit, but he really can't with Stan next. Ooh, that would be danger, Will Robinson. Lee's had good numbers against Joe, seven for 15. He fouls that one away. Nice little change up there on two and one. That one had El Caballo way out in front. Lee for a guy who he's had some power numbers in the past. I mean, he's a bit, he doesn't strike out a whole lot. No. Only 34 strikeouts this year and 400 at bats. He's going to put the bat on the ball. He's always been that way in his career. Oh, he swings and misses here. He changed up on him, two and two. Another beautiful change up. You can see once again El Caballo way out in front. And the count evens out of two balls, two strikes. Diamondback late in jeopardy here. Oh, Joe wanted that one. Nothing doing, says Jim Joyce. Full count. Awfully close, but that ball's in. What do you think, Ranch running? I would. I definitely would if, once again, we talk about Lee doesn't strike out much. But we know Joe Saunders has a pretty doggone good move to first base. Only caught seven times, Reyes. He is going. And a little floater. I'll be darned. He's got a weird inning for Joe Saunders. With Hill break into the bag, Lee hit it right where Hill was standing. And it got about a foot into the outfield grass. It scores a run to tie the game. That's why you send the runners. You put the pressure on the defense by the runner going. That forces Hill to vacate. Oh, now, instead of a little easy pop to the second baseman, and nobody scoring, boy, now, these Florida Marlins looking for a possible big inning. Three broken bats, three base hits. And you know Joe's got to be frustrated, but he's got to pitch around this somehow, some way, and <laughs> here is Stanton. With two on and nobody out, that's a game, a 1 1 ball game. Struck him out first time up, swinging on a 3 2 pitch. He's going to try to continue to stay inside. He's going a little bit too far inside, though, and Jim Joyce is not giving him off that corner in there. And rightfully so. And 
Bowser Joe could really use that double play ball. He got one off the bat of Buck in the second. There's a strike. Good pitch there right at the knees. Let's take a look at our high speed pitch brought to you by CenturyLink, Saunders and Burley. Joe's got to have this one by five miles per hour. Yeah, Mark Burley never going to light up a radar gun. But he doesn't need to. No. That's not his style. No. Foul ball. <laughs> that is going to. Fortunately, that hit the facing of the second deck. Because that ball was hit so hard, nobody would have been able to avoid that one. Bang. But because Joe got it where he needed to get it, and that is inside. Wow. They let stand at 6'5, 246 in the media again. Give or take some poundage. One thing we know, he is strong as he just proved. And that Joe missed his spot, missed it badly. Wow. And that is a long, long home run. That one, that, that wasn't a broken bat. No. Just like that, with nobody out, it is 4 1 Marlins. Well, you make a mistake to this guy. Thanks yes. for coming. Drive home safely. Some kind of strong. Fort stand number 25. Watch where the pitch it. goes. Oh, man. Wanted it in, threw it right down the middle, and my goodness, did Stanton ever pound it. So three little bloopers and a blast. Now the dieback's going to have to come from behind in this one now. Still nobody out in the inning. John Carlos Stanton. Bach hits one. Or excuse me, Ruggiano hits one deep, and that's going to go back to back. Go the fish. It's a five run in it. And now you can see the Joe hasn't hasn't been able to stop the bleeding. I think those those three bloopers to score a run opened up a a mental wound, and Joe just hasn't been able to. Get any bandage on. Now we're going to get a visit. You see another fastball right down the middle. Ruggiano kills it. Now, how about a visit from Kurt Gibson? Not the pitching coach, but Kurt Gibson. And right now he's talking to Montero. Now he talks to Saunders. Probably some encouragement. Try and. Anything he can to keep Joe, keep his head back in the game. Joe had some really, really lousy luck with those first three batters. And I think he ended up giving up a base hit and really, or I'm sorry, gave up a run. And really hardly, the balls barely got to the outfield. And then Stan, he missed on his location. Stan made him pay. And then. Same story with Ruggiano. Yeah. So 5-1 now, big five run inning against the D-backs. Fourth back-to-back. Home runs for the Marlins this year. Stan, by the way, now has got a dozen home runs against the National League West. There's another here. Wow. Now you have to wonder just how much longer Gibby can stay with Joe. Joe's only thrown 56 pitches, but you'd like to see him right the ship, but you can't fall behind, you know, seven, eight runs here. Six consecutive hits. Remember that nine run inning the Diamondbacks had of the fifth at Houston. The first eight reached, but they had some walks and an air sprinkled in. These have been six straight hits for the Marlins. Murphy takes a strike. Well, the last time Joe Pitts, he was hit on the hand by a line drive in St. Louis off the bat of Matt Holliday. You see, he stuck it out there, and it really swelled up as he went to the dugout. And Joe even admitted 
Probably should have come out of the he game. He should huh? not have gone out there. He got the first two outs. There's a foul back and out of play. Now well, the next inning, but on the Cardinals put a couple of guys on him for called tripled home a pair. It was in the uh, sixth inning. He was in the fifth inning. He got hit. Well, I'm not using that as an excuse. And he was okay for the first three innings. Boy, here in the fourth inning, a little bad luck, and then. The last three batters have really matched the ball. I'm talking about Stan Ruggiano and Buck. Stan the long home run in the front his front row. Ruggiano to straightaway center, and then Buck lays to single to left. And it should be the first out of the center. Young trot in from center, gets center, puts it away. So now the seventh batter makes it out. Yeah, now you're probably going to get a free out right here from Mark Burley. He should be sacrificing here. He has one sacrifice on the season, three hits. Burley. There's a bunt in the air caught by Sanders, but no other throw. does throw. Safe. APS Energy All Star Assist has replaced old incandescent bulbs with CFLs. They use 75% less energy. Center fielder, Emilio Bonifacio. So Burley didn't get the bunt down. One unassisted on the a little pop. Here's Bonifacio now with two outs. And the Diamondbacks. Still a lot of ball game left. If Joe can clean up this mess. And find a couple more zeros on the board. Diamondbacks, they do swing the bats well at home. Now they're going to need two tonight. Very well said. Bonifacio just back off the DL. He missed 14 games due to a left thumb sprain. Earlier this year, he missed 46 games after he suffered. The first of the left thumb sprint. So he's had a problem with it. This chopped to third. Johnson, a quick throw and safe. Grossman came off the bag and filled hit for Bonifacio. Keeps this one going. Nine have batted now in the inning. He can fly again. That he can. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. The throw was off the bag. That might have been one if. Johnson could maybe think and do it all over again. Maybe try to get the force at second base on the slow footed John Buck. The bullpen phone for the Diamondbacks has run. There is Solano who started this inning with a bloop single to center. Brad Bergeson's going to get up, start loosening. So Solano, the 10th man to bat here. Ten hits off Joe Saunders in less than four innings. Make it 11 hits and another run. Upton will throw back into the middle portion of the diamond. Solano two for two in the inning and it's 6-1 Miami. And now you have to wonder if Gibby can stay with Joe Saunders. Bergeson he just, just got, got up. up. And now... You're coming into Jose Reyes, Carlos Lee. Thirty-three pitches this inning for Saunders. Six have scored. Yeah, it just seems like those three base hits that led to that first run, Greg. It just like I said, it it opened up a gaping mental wound that Joe Saunders just has not been able to bandage here. And the Miami Marlins and big possibility here of putting this one quite possibly out of reach here with something by Reyes. Eight hits in this inning for the Marlins. Eight. They've had ten batters to the plate. There it is. 
runs, nine hits in the inning. A couple of more runs. Wow, what an inning for the Miami Marlins. And the Diamondback fans not happy at all with what has transpired here. So Solano and Reyes are four for four in the inning alone. And now as Gibby comes out to get Joe Saunders from the ball game. Well, Joe was just on a roll for, oh. through the first three innings, and then boy, a large kerthunk here in the fourth. Ferguson will come on. the Diamondbacks here with two outs in this fourth inning the fish the Miami Marlins have scored eight runs they have nine hits in the inning two players Solano and Reyes are two for two and Carlos Reyes has got a chance to go two for two in this inning he's at the plate guys Carlos Rea, Carlos Lee Reyes is at uh, second base Jose Reyes Outside, nice block there by Montero. And Joe Saunders breezed through the front three innings. But here in the fourth, three little dunk hits started the inning. And that got the Marlins running. And they haven't looked back. Well, get out of play. Most runs given up in an inning by the Diamondbacks this year now. They had given up six in an inning, four different times. But a big eight spot for their opponent here tonight coming in the fourth. That's a hit. Here comes another runner to the plate. Young Starwell. Not being time, lead down to second. They're going to get him. And that will mercifully end the inning. Holy mackerel. Ten hits in the inning, nine Miami runs. And they're on top, 9 1.
an eight run lead. He ain't got to catch it, but he's going to fire the ball anyway. Yeah, here you go. If you're not out there, I'm going to throw it to you anyway. <laughs> That's how quick Mark Burley works. And boy, all of a sudden he works with a eight run lead here in the bottom of the fourth. And a strike to Kubel, who accounted for the double only run of this game until that fourth inning when uh, he had a home run of the first. Greg, uh, Greg, two quick words. What happened? <laughs> a lot. Holy smokes. Nine runs on 10 hits in that inning. And thank goodness Carlos Lee was running. We'd still be playing in that inning. <laughs> yeah. You just feel bad for Joe Saunders. He was in complete control. And then those three bad handle and end of the bat jobs. And that's strike three called to Jason Kubel. There's the first out of the fourth inning. And then it just... Unfortunately, the the floodwaters just couldn't be held back. Goldsmith grounded a third first time up. Yeah, it happened quick. It happened too quick. There's a hit to left by Goldschmidt. And they got a lot to do. <laughs> a lot, long way to go here. Yeah. A lot of hits to get, but uh, we still have a lot of ball game to play. Just, there, there's a lot of outs still left to get. Diamondbacks just had a nine run inning of their own a couple of days ago in Houston. Now the odds of doing it again are pretty remote, but you can still get nine runs in the game, not necessarily just in one inning. But you got to start now. Yep. You need several multiple scoring innings. Upton line to center first time up. Take a look at our key to the game brought to you by Kia Motors. This one's mine. Since you know you were kind enough, I've been gone. Andy Dufresne. Do you know do you know who Andy Dufresne is, Greg? The name sounds familiar. Okay, there was a great, great movie based on a book by Stephen King called Shawshank Redemption. You remember yeah, Shawshank Morgan Redemption? Freeman. Yeah, great movie. Tim Robbins. Well, that's a base hit to left field by Justin Upton. This is it's just perfect that that happened. Because right now, Andy Dufresne was was uh, sentenced to prison at Shawshank wrongly. He was right. not supposed to be there. So, however, he built himself a little homemade rock hammer, and he and he yeah he, he, he started picking away. He had a he had a poster of uh, one of the beautiful women back then and back then in the day, like an Aunt Margaret or somebody like that, and. At night, he'd always take a little rock hammer and he'd chip away, chip away just an inch at a time. It took him 20 something years to do it, but he finally dug a tunnel to escape Shawshank. We don't have 20 years, though. So. And he <laughs> climbed through a river of sewage yeah. to his freedom. Well, that's kind of what's going to have to happen here this evening. I think the Diamondbacks are going to have to, well, they're going to have to go Andy Dufresne here. Chip, chip, chip. And try to treat Mark Burley and the Miami Marlins like Shawshank. Well, and let's hope it works away. out. And right now, it's, I think it worked out for Andy. Yeah, Goldschmidt, and then Upton back-to-back -back base hits. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while, but it can be done. And as Kirk Gibson always likes to say, we have nowhere to go. We'll play until the 27th out. Let's get a win. Be too happy with what he's seen though early tonight. So 
even coaches have to make plays with their bare hands. Nice. I got it. Uh huh. Some, some players just never lose. Montero strikes out. Got him chase a pitch up and out of the zone. See what you have to be careful of here too is trying to, you know, swing it for the fences here. I just keep turning it over to the next guy. And get a get a good inning going. Yeah, you gotta just kind of keep the line moving if you can. Yeah, home runs are fun and home runs are sexy. But you gotta do a lot more than just hit a home run right now. You need base runners. And lots of them. Here's Chris Johnson with two outs. He grounded out to Lee, the first baseman, to end the second inning. And that scores right if you just turn the TV on. <laughs> Nine in the fourth inning for the Marlins. Nice job by Johnson laying off a couple of close pitches. See if he can get something to his liking. Spank one in the gap or something like that. He got one that to his liking, but he was tardy on it. On two and oh. One out singles by Goldschmidt and Upton. Giving the Diamondbacks a chance this inning. They'd sure like to cash in with one or two or maybe even three cut into this 9 1 lead. Tried to get the boys over there as well. It's not a safe place to sit tonight, the dugout, I guess. Either side. Watch out, Don Baylor. I think Don Baylor got hit, it would hurt the ball. <laughs> Once again, a nice take there. That tantalizing change up. Let's do our AT&T trivia question real quick for the 3 2 pitch. Last five lefties won 10 plus in 10 or more consecutive seasons. Well, he is one of them right here, Mr. Burley. And there's a hit. And here comes a run to make it 9 to 2. So the Diamondbacks indeed strike back with a run. Keep it going. Oh, somewhere the fictional Andy Dufresne is smiling. Good to see Chris Johnson get a big hit too. He was an RBI machine for the first 10 games or so that he was here, and now he got him a breaking ball in three and two, and just rifled it into left field. Goldschmidt scores easily. That snaps an 0 for 18 for him. And that's what you were talking about too, Greg. Yeah. Instead of the big swing for the down swings, you just you got to just put some good swings on the ball, get some base hits, climb back in this thing. Now Jake Elmore. Nobody comes out on deck for the Diamondbacks. Well, I'm guessing Bergeson may have to go an inning or two here tonight. Well, we'll see. You should have a semi-fresh bullpen. Yeah, he's out now. Now it might change if Elmore gets a hit here. You want to keep it going. That's what you're hoping for. Elmore can get a hit and get Upton in. Strike. One and two the count. Elmore looking for that first big league RBI. Can't think of a better time to get it than right here. Any base hit will score Justin Upton with his great speed. Bonifaz 
steal back. He'll get it. He's got a lot of speed back there. Tracks it down, and that will end the inning. Diamondbacks get three hits in a run. And uh, getting a little closer, Andy Dupre, to that getaway in Mexico. You were wrongly in prison. One's going out first to four and fun times out there at the Rams trucks TV pool. Another big crowd on hand there tonight. And the Diamondbacks with some work to do. Stan the batter. It'll be up to Brad Bergeson to put up some zeros. Preferably about three or four in a row. Stand a long home run his last time up. Gosh, was it? Right his front row. Three run shot. Let's take a look just where this ball lands. Make a mistake to this young man. It makes a loud, loud sound with his bat. That was a hanging breaking ball that time. Giancarlo Stanton just a little quick with it. That should do it. Oh, didn't get the call from Jim Joyce. Good pitch. Ferguson struck a pose too. I think he thought he had him. Got him there. Let's uh, complete that and show you where that home run actually landed. Look at the little red area up there left of Friday's. Okay, that guy caught it there. Where he tried to catch it. Yeah, I think he swung and missed. <laughs> kind of like Justin Ruggiano right there. I'm not going to tell him anything, though. He's a big yeah. boy. Giano's two for two with a single and a home run. Ground ball to short. Moore's been busy. Two outs. And now John Buck will come to the plate. Catcher John Buck. For Brad Bergeson. This is appearance number seven for the Diamondbacks. Running from Baltimore. He's come out firing strikes here. That's what you love to see. When you go out and get a run, get right back on the mount, have a good, crisp, quick, quick inning, 
Let's go try and do this thing again. It's there's no question, folks. It's an uphill climb, a steep uphill climb. And you got 15 outs to work with. What you need to do is spread those outs around. Just get a couple of runs here or there, and then an out. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's all you can do now. Just get that rock hammer out and peck away at this thing. See if he can keep butt to a single. He will. Second hit. And 14, Marlon sits now. Third baseman, Dominic Murphy. Take a look at our Chevron upcoming pitching matchup. This is what's going to happen in the ballgame tomorrow night in Alaska and Cahill. And Alaska can be very, very good or not very, very good. We've seen him a little bit of both. Yeah, we've seen him both ways. That's true. Yeah, he's got to get on his horse. And it'll hit the wall and stay in the ballpark. And that'll allow Buck to score. They've got that run right back on a triple by Murphy. Uh, now that. Yeah, that's that's too bad right there for Bergeson. Two quick outs and he gets burned by two hitters. Back to back, the coming into this contest, we're hitting 188. Just a fastball down the middle. Murphy hammers it. That's a season high of hits with 15. They're not even through five innings yet in this ball game. Well, this hasn't been much fun. No. Yeah. Gonzo was, you know, four and two on the road trip. Well, 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 no, no, no. The trip before, I was six and four. You were. You were. I was six and four in Los Angeles, Philly, and Pittsburgh. Gonzo did a great job, though. I'm sure he'll be letting me know, too. And that's a strike out of Burley. He didn't really care. He wants to go back out and pitch quickly and. Get a win here tonight. He's up big time in this game. 10 to 2. Which Diamondback legend do you want honored in the Legends Entertainment District? Whoa! You hit there, Gracie. You're A. Randy Johnson is B. Kurt Schilling is C. Matt Williams is D. Those up there. A, B, C, or D. There's a strike to Bergeson who bats for himself. Well, he would certainly be a. Breath of fresh air up how, on that building. How about all of the above? With the 
you guys all in the picture. Lewis on the ground is second. Salama throws him out on the way. Well, this would be good. Oh, yeah. That, I'll tell you what. I had a great time with Usain Bolt down in Jamaica. Good food. Yeah, that's just, yeah, we should put that out on the. All it took is one little fingertip to hold the leaning tower of Pisa. I like the one where you were, were you on Mount Everest. Yeah, the Sherpas. I'll favorite. tell you, that was a little chilly. I bet it was. Your shirt, you got short sleeves on. It was chilly. Everybody else bundled up. <laughs> Him, but it goes foul here in Phoenix for Chris Young. Uh, just about anything he does in Houston comes up roses, doesn't it? Yeah. Burley with an eight run lead to work on here. Well, once again, you need base runners. Chris Young's done a good job of getting a 3 1 count. But he pops up a 3 1 pitch. He's going to put it away. It's going to be Donovan Solano. If you or someone you know would love to be calling the game and is between the ages of 10 through 14. Come on out Sunday to Chase Field for the Fox Sports Arizona and Sanderson Ford Kid Caster auditions from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. near section 115 and 116 during the Padres and Diamondbacks game. Come on out. Bring them out. Jim Joyce still barking them out, isn't he? Yeah, he's not going to he's not going to be quiet. He's going to call his game. Is over for Burley. He's through five, as are the Marlins, with a 10-2 lead here over the Diamondbacks. Interactive kiosk right here at Chase Field during any Arizona Diamondbacks regular season home game. Well, this home game has not gone as the Diamondbacks wanted it to go. To this point, through five, it's 10 2 Marlins, a nine run fourth inning, and they knocked out Joe Saunders. And Fascio slaps it foul. Just for good measure, I looked up the first game back after that last road trip, that 10 gamer to LA, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. And the Diamondbacks went 6 4. First game back in, they lost to the Washington Nationals 9 1 
in that ball game. Well, Ten to two tonight. You hate to have that kind of history yeah. repeat. Fuller should make this easy. Right, One out here in the six. Now Donovan Solano, a thorn in the side of the Diamondbacks in that nine run fourth inning. He was two for two, a two run scored. He was two for two, Reyes was two for two, and Lee was two for two. They had six of the ten hits. They scored five of the runs. And they drove in five. That's pretty good production right there. That's in one inning. Ferguson came on in relief in the fourth, got the final out. He worked the fifth inning and gave up a couple of hits in a run. He's retired the first man here in the sixth. Sure, the Marlins are remembering that series April 27th through the 30th, where the Diamondbacks went into Marlins Park, their new ballpark, and won three out of four. They'd like to return the favor here at Chase Field. It's full now, three and two. Solano made a pitch for another hit. Well, pardon me, Greg, but join Fox Sports Arizona and the Diamondbacks for the Going Gonzo for Kids Mystery Ball Fundraiser. Call in during the August 28th Diamondbacks game and buy a mystery autographed baseball for $50. Those balls are signed by me, Luis Gonzalez, and Randy Johnson, along with members from this year's team. 25 of the ball packages will include a golden ticket, redeemable for great prizes. Proceeds benefit going going Gonzo for kids charity as that was ripped down the right field line. Jose Reyes, all he's doing is just hitting here this evening. Now that Upton was going to catch that and looked like it went off his glove. Meanwhile, while I was reading War and Peace, <laughs> Jose Reyes right off the glove there of Justin Upton. He's four for four, Gracie. Man, Grace. That boy can hit. 16 Marlins hits. And Carlos Lee steps in. He's three for three. Yeah. These rascals, just about everybody's got at least two hits for the Marlins here. They are doing it here this evening. Everybody except Burley's at least got a hit. Double and a man left. It's all Marlins here in the sixth inning.
here with a 10 2 lead as we go to the bottom of the six inning. He's allowed five hits. He has struck out three, hasn't walked anybody. Kubel tagged him for a home run, which in the first inning gave the Diamondbacks a 1 0 lead and held up until that fateful fourth inning when the Marlins got nine. Stan's home run was a three run shot that inning. Luciano followed that up with a home run. 16 Marlins hits. It's foul from Kubel. Ray is a big night. Tied a career high with three doubles. He's got four hits in the game. That guy hit a mammoth home run. Three and two now on Kubel. Diamondback starting to run out of time here. He's got to score a bunch quickly. That's down the line. It's trouble if it's fair. And it's foul. Let's answer our AT&T trivia question. Lefties 10 plus. I'm going to say CC's in that. Also. Lighter Glavin and Jimmy Key. Remember Jimmy Key? Jimmy Key has quietly put together a great career. Now Lighter. Yeah, Sabathia and Burley, the only two uh, active in that grouping. And Google strikes oh, out. Got him chasing breaking ball down in the dirt for strike three. Four strike out for Burley. Goldschmidt's got to get tonight one for two. On average, keeps staying close to that 300 mark, 299. He just looks like he keeps getting better and better. This would be an easy out. Has it in. Two down. Well, you played in these games. You've been on trips. You come back and you have a. Stinker like this one, at least to this juncture of the ball game, and we still got some game to play. You just got to keep trudging through it, don't you? Yeah, you, you, know, you always hear Kirk Gibson. His his motto is, "You got to push through it. You just keep pushing, push through it." You know, these, these games are tough to push through. That little hammer you were talking about, yeah. though, I think we need a sledgehammer. Or I, I, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna <laughs> a need a hammer. <laughs> we're gonna have to plow right through here quick. As you said, we're running out of time in this one. <laughs> what, what are those big things they use to dig caves? <laughs> Upton's got a hit tonight, one for two. Burley, the fastest worker in the game, you think? Yes. I agree. Wade Miley's right there with yeah. him. Boy, how would you like to get those two guys working on top of their game, pitching against one mm -hmm. another? The, down. Tell you what, Trevor Cahill's another guy that works pretty fast. Beautiful fastball in there. Justin didn't think so, but that's a strike. Just able to take a defensive swing foul and keep it alive. Game for Upton. He's on now for Montero. And he just kept the at bat alive by fighting off some tough pitches and got him something he could handle and singles out to right field. 
Back in 2009, on the date of July 23rd, Mark Burley pitched the 18th perfect game in Major League history. And the first since Randy Johnson pitched one for the Diamondbacks back in 2004. So that was a five year difference. Montero yeah. into left field. This inning comes to an end. Think about that. That span without perfect games. There have been three this season. Not perfect tonight, but he's got a 10 2 lead. Out the bad news, D-backs trailing the Marlins 10 to 2. The better news, right-hander Josh Commenter is getting better and better. Remember back on August the 9th, he came back from that 10-game road trip, became violently ill, went to the hospital that night, diagnosed with a bleeding ulcer. Doctors were able to go in and perform surgery that night. He lost a couple pints of blood, but he says he's doing great right now. He threw a bullpen session on Saturday, expected a pitch tomorrow as well, and so he could come off the DL as early as the 25th. He's been so valuable for this team, but he said it came on just incredibly suddenly, but he knew right away he was not uh, doing well and went right to the hospital. All right thank you. And Carlos Stan leads it off here in the seventh inning. He's got the big blast of this game that three run homer. Now that nine run fourth inning. For good measure he's going to go even further this time. Not that quite. He is officially a power hitter. Golly. <laughs> He's talking about Feaster Fabric. Two long home runs and two strikeouts. Jeez. Modern day Reggie Jackson right here. Now you see why the uh, Rockies walked Ooh. him intentionally a couple times yesterday. When these big sluggers, like when they get hot, and like he is, I mean, they come in bunches. 26 home runs now. For Stanton, as that one's popped to the right side. It's going to put it away in foul territory. Uh, he he, he, he high fived no one. His coach left. That's kind of strange. Yeah. Where'd Joey Espada go? He's back over there now. Yeah, Joey Espada. Giving no love to Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton now has 13 home runs against the National League West this year. Golly, those are just bombs. UPS Energy All Star, 10 hit, 9 run, 4th inning. Had the franchise record. That's a pretty good inning. Yeah. Nick 
Oh, those two guys, Stan and Reyes, played a big part in this game tonight. Well, for the Marlins, this is a, a nice little change of pace because it has been a tough year for them. a lot of people pick this ball club, maybe even to win the East. All the changes they made and the additions, Ozzie Gein coming in as skipper. That ball is driven. That ball is going to go. Oh, man. Four home runs tonight for the Fish. This one belonging to John Buck, his third hit of the game. I guess they, uh, they got a roll in the course field now to chase. Well, if you're Brad Bergerson, you, you need to you need to maybe make somebody move their feet a little bit. You can't just let these opponents stand in there and swing from their heels. You gotta you gotta earn some respect out there as well. I'm not saying hit this young man. I'm not saying that at all. But these, these guys are just teeing off. If you're Brad Bergerson, there's nothing wrong with. Maybe making these guys move a little bit. Well, they're moving. Unfortunately, they're moving around the bases. Yeah, because I mean, and uh, you know, I, I don't know what Miguel Montero and/or Aaron Hill are going to tell Brad Bergeson, but yeah, go ahead and go ahead and pitch inside a little bit. Bullpen is going to get up. And he's going to go to the mound for a visit after he was on the phone to the bullpen telling somebody to get loose. Stan, by the way, his second multi-homer game this season, the sixth of his career. And while we have a break in the action, Greg, we need to wish a happy birthday to our technical director, Jason Moon. It's his birthday today. There you go. How old? I don't know. 36, I understand now. 36 years old, Jason. Happy birthday. Sorry we didn't... Uh, have a little more fun on the field here. Yeah. Hope your birthday's a little happier than what we got going on here right now. Burley is over three in the ball game. Looks like Shaw, the pitcher up for the Diamondbacks, loosening. Bergson trying to get through this inning. He is scheduled up third when the Diamondbacks hit in the seventh. All fish right now. 19 hits. Golly. That is very impressive by these Miami Marlins. That was swatted foul. We'll do it again. A, uh, that's a new high by an opponent this year off the Diamondbacks. Atlanta had 17 back on June 26. There's Shaw. To an end, but not before two more home runs. Long ones by Stan, the second of the game, and Buck. Boy, it's pretty.
Liberty pitching here in the uh, seventh inning to Chris Johnson with a 13 to 2 lead. And a ground ball foul. We welcome you up here to the booth. Joe Borowski has joined us. And just, I guess, one of those tights, oh. huh, Joe? Hi, Joe. <laughs> it started out as Good a to be game. back, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You come back from your from your oh, vacation man. and you're greeted with this. I am officially the schlep rock. What'd you see with Joe in the, uh, the nine run inning? I did not see it coming. First three innings, he looked sharp, and sure enough, three balls that probably totaled about 120 feet started that inning going. And I know from experience as a pitcher, the more pitches you throw in an inning, the more apt you are to start making mistakes. Right. And you saw that with the the pitch to Stanton. And then it just it was just a snowball from that then on. That big guy can hit, can huh? Oh yeah. Chris Johnson hits this one well with one of Fossil's front back. Borkis Hernandez made the grab there. He looks the part too. Yeah. He's a specimen in the box. How about the foul balls yeah. he says? <laughs> like, yeah, if it's like you, you watch him, you look at him like, who dressed the Clyde's yeah. down? I mean he's a monster. I mean, there's no fat on that dude. <laughs> He is a straight beast. You know, you know how it is when those guys get hot. Those power sure. hitters, when they get hot, they hit them in bunches. And right now, that is one piping hot young man hitting them a long, long ways. Five home runs, four games for him. I mean, he's one of those guys who can go on those kind of tears. Yeah, and so what? He has two strikeouts tonight. He also has two home two runs. Homers. I'll take those any day. Mark Burley looks like Mark Burley here tonight, doesn't he? Yeah, he settled in nicely after that Kubel home run in the first. He's just a guy who gets the ball, looks at the sign, and throws it. Yeah. There's there's no walking around him on. There's no thinking. Change he, speeds. He trusts his catcher enough to, to go over the game plan that they worked on before the game started, and he goes out there and throws. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but he was ready to warm up, and his catcher, John Buck, wasn't <laughs> out there yet, and he, he started to deliver the ball to the plate. And, Buck had to run into the screen to make the catch. <laughs> Gracie, I know you can appreciate playing behind guys I, like that. I loved it. I loved it. Keeps you on your toes. It keeps you in the game. Well, you played with Greg Maddox. Didn't? Sure. Yeah, it, he worked very fast as well. Threw strikes. You just knew. Which is the polar opposite of working behind somebody like uh, Steve Traxel. Very well oh. said. Or Rick Sutcliffe. Oh. You don't want to see those guys on a getaway day. Oh, my goodness. Day games in Chicago, you get <laughs> three hour and 45 minute, you know, four three ball games. Yeah. And you have his batting for Bergeson here. In the season. Well, Joe, we'll see you after the game. Okay, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that went All quick. Right. <laughs> see you later. Uh, oh, you're still get a quick look at Joe. Are they doing? already, Joe? <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Time brought to you by Miller Lite. How about this big bopper? Oh, goodness gracious. And that's a different home run, but the same look. Still really far. 
Jeez. Stan's had a big night. Her home runs, four runs batted in, but all the Marlins have had a big night. This a, a silver lining on an August 20th night for a dismal season for the Miami Marlins. 47th appearance now for Brian Shaw. He comes on. A little bit of news here briefly before we uh, start this inning. A couple of former Diamondbacks, Juan Cruz. Designated for assignment today by the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Braves signed Lyle Overbay to a minor league contract. He'll uh, go play for their Triple A team, Gwinnett, and join the Braves when the rosters expand in September. So good for Lyle. Here's Ryan Wheeler at first base, replacing Paul Goldschmidt. And I don't think we had seen Wheeler yet at first base, just third base here. Goldschmidt coming into this ball game. A lot of consecutive games. This was his 26 consecutive game starting. He'll get a couple of innings off here and come in fresh tomorrow. Nieves, by the way, who pinch hit is catching. Gorky Hernandez. God, nice play. I mean, these guys are just swinging. That was a rocket. Self defense there for Aaron Hill, but a nice play. One pitch, one out. Second baseman. First ever D backs double header at Chase Field just two days away now. Diamondbacks take on these Marlins 1240 this Wednesday, and then again at 640. Be here for both games. You get a commemorative double header pin, plus there'll be lots of activities, specials going on downtown in between games. Get tickets. More info by calling 602 514 to log on to dbacks.com slash doubleheader. Jeez. That's a blue Diamondbacks cap yeah. that guy's got on. I'm looking at the two beautiful I know what you're looking at. So I him. too, but. I, I think those are uh, Fourth of July Diamondback hats. Yeah, it had some uh, stars in it, so I'm guessing you're right. There's the old school. Kind of. That's the happy guy. Yeah. Well, this has not been a lot of fun of that. Unfortunately, that. Yeah. every team has these. Yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the way the the Diamondbacks are feeling. It's okay, honey. We'll get them tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna come out. Yeah. We got a double header. It's okay. The Shaw's are on the count to three and one here on Solano. He and Reyes and Lee all had two hits apiece in that nine run fourth inning. He's on base ahead of Reyes who's coming up looking for a fifth hit in this game. That believe it or not believe it or not is the first walk in this ball game. Shortstop, Jose Reyes. They are having fun. They got some some fun beverages might be a first date. Please. Never know. Come on out to the ballpark. It's a great place to bring a date, folks. There you go. Bring your significant other and watch some Major League Baseball and watch a wild pitch. Under the second. You never know. You just might run into a silver medalist in archery. <laughs> Everybody's texting. But be careful with him because he Look is. Uh, he is a. Uh, a great shot with a bow and arrow, and he's got the medal to prove it. Rally cap on. Yeah, that thing better be 10 gallon. But still, come on out, folks. Long homestand. And it is, it's time for somebody to get Jose Reyes out. Don't you think? Yeah. I would hope so. Because nobody has yet. Four for four this evening. He has uh, done it all tonight. And that base running gap in the first inning doesn't look so bad now. He doubled with two men out. Hey, a nice catch. Great play. That's why you bring your glove. 
Chris Della with two out tried to stretch it into a triple and got thrown out at third base in that inning. That young man made a nice catch. The one with the glove, not the one texting. <laughs> Reyes has had a five hit game that was back in 06 while with the Mets against Atlanta. In case you're wondering. Here's a stat that kind of puzzles me with him. I'm going to get to it in a second. You know, he's a leadoff guy, a top of the order guy. Most runs he's ever scored in a ball game, three. I yeah, think he would have had a four yeah, run game one time. Thought, ago. Certainly. Yeah. Counts run full on him, three and two from Shaw. Of course, no more Hanley Ramirez. He's packed bags, moved cross country. He's now wearing a Dodgers uniform, and I don't think there are too many really in the Marlin organization. That are missing him, including their manager. Yeah, Ozzie again. Ozzie again. San Francisco hanging on against the Dodgers. Hanley Ramirez, new home. Yeah, Ozzie. Ozzie didn't have many good things to no. say about Hanley Ramirez, did he? No. Nope. I'll give you the latest on Ozzie and Hanley. Oh, nice play by Well. Knocks it down. Can he get over it? They got him at first. Nice play on Hill. As he never gave up on that play once it deflected off Wheeler's glove. And they retire Reyes at first base. That'll go 3 4 1. Oh, when these guys make outs, they hit bullets. Nice play by Hill staying with it. And a good job by Shaw getting over and getting the out. And I think that ball went right through the glove. It <laughs> broke the glove. He hit it so doggone hard, it broke the glove. Of Wheeler. I thought it, it, it looked like it did. Sure enough, that right went through right it. through the glove. Wow. Broke the glove. That's the kind of night it's been hitting the baseball for these Florida Mar I'm sorry, Miami Marlins. Whatever they are. They have been some kind of impressive. Yeah, right through the glove it goes. Wow. Well, he hadn't used that glove in a while. He's been playing third base. There's a strike. Did you ever have glove do that to you? Oh, sure. <laughs> you got to remember, I had Sean Dunstan throwing True. balls to me for a lot of years. He could break a glove just playing catch. Here's the uh, the line from Ozzy again. Hanley Ramirez showboated a home run on Thursday, and that drew the ire of Pirates pitcher A.J. Burnett. Gian was quoted as saying, that's Hanley. If Hanley hits a home run down by 30 runs, he'd pimp it. That's the way he is. You were talking about it. And the pimping it means just sh show off. Yeah. Do some kind of a dance. Do something crazy. Sean's got to be quick to this. Gets it. And he throws out the slow-footed Carlos Lee to win the inning. No runs. The first walk of this game. Man left. All Marlins.
push continues as the NL wild card leading Braves take on the Giants as both teams look to keep pace in the playoff race. Fox Saturday baseball telecast presented by Budweiser begins at 12:30 p.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Mark Burley is going to be replaced by right-hander Chris Hatcher. We're going to see Chris's numbers in just a short time. Gave him a, gave himself a pat on the head with the rosin bag. Nine backs been limited to six hits here tonight. Burley went. Front seven in line to win his 11th. Young in the leadoff spot tonight, 0 for 3. Yeah, that ball will get down, go deep. That's the one for a lot. And we'll head on to third base. Not going to stop at second here. Down by 10. But a good start to the eighth inning. Second base. Oh, he takes a fast ball and just rifles it. Just out of the reach of Hernandez and center field. And by the time he corrals it, Chris Young was thinking maybe let's go for three, but I think he wisely stops at second. No sense taking any chances at all when you're down by ten. Yeah. Aaron Hill over three tonight. Only Diamondback with a pair of hits. Upton. There you go. Hatcher was recalled from the minor leagues or Triple A club in New Orleans on August 3rd. It's his third stint with Miami this season. Appeared in 11 games for the Marlins last year. And he promptly falls behind Aaron Hill 3 0. On a lopsided game like this, chance for Ozzie Gian to get him a little work. But if he doesn't get the job done, start getting some outs, he won't be in there very long. Yeah, it doesn't take long to get under the skin of Ozzie no. Gian. <laughs> Fans are having fun with Jim Joyce now. They're mimicking him on his strike calls. Thing about it, you know, if it's a strike, he lets everybody know. Young goes back to ten. And just makes the catch, gets it back in. Young the third one out. Bill over four tonight. Well, when this guy came to the plate in the first inning, he promptly put the Diamondbacks on top one to nothing. And it stayed that way until the fourth. I was going to say, the Diamondbacks actually led in this ball game going to the fourth inning. But then came that fateful fourth. Twelve batters, ten hits, and nine Marlins runs. And that faithful fourth, as you said, is officially when the fun ended. Yeah. In this one, good and it happened ball. quick. Nice. Gosh, it did, didn't it? First seven batters got hits, including two home runs. Didn't get up there a little bit. Ran, ran in on cool Brad Ziegler up. Well, the Diamondbacks. We talked about Andy Dufresne and <laughs> using the rock hammer and trying to get back in this one. I think they caught Andy, and I think uh, I think they they put him in the hole. Yeah, he uh, 
That prison key was thrown away. Yeah, he's in solitary <laughs> confinement <laughs> right now with, at Shawshank. It was a good try, Andy, yeah. but uh, you got discovered. <laughs> Three words to you, Andy Dufresne. Crime doesn't pay. <laughs> will score a run as Young comes in with a cool ground out. So Jason's knocked in two tonight, giving him 79 on the year. And the fans cheer a run. That makes it 12 to 3, but two outs in the inning. Well, let's hope Brian Wheeler hasn't got a hole in the bat like he had a hole in the glove. Last inning, though, and that ball went right through it. Wheeler got his uh, first career home run in Houston and then got a 41 second silent treatment in the dugout. That's a long silent it, treatment. It was, it was a long one. A couple pitches were thrown. Not really good either in LA tonight. Well, I, I guess it is. Uh, it I is good. Yeah. Get, gonna, San Francisco. I was going to beg to differ. San Francisco a half game behind the Dodgers. So it is good news right now. 2 0 that score. Giants 6 inning. They're beating Kershaw. Bumgarner, right? In that one. Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw. How about a couple of stud young left handers? And everybody's happy down there. But a good hit by Wheeler. Two down of the inning. He's starting to make some good swings on the ball, isn't he? Yeah. Just does a nice job of driving it the other way. Keeps his head down. Right field. He doesn't just push that ball the other way. I mean, he drove that ball. He's a big boy. When he connects, it makes a loud sound. Just enough to now going to get an opportunity here with one on and two outs. A couple of hits tonight. On the left, one to right, two for three. It may be playable. <laughs> no. Look out, Carlos. Good hurt, Carlos. Goes over and then he thinks better of it wisely. Would you would you have been able to catch Carlos Lee coming in that dugout like that? That's a big man. If I had help, well, like about three or four other guys. Say. All those guys. Maybe the help of a crane.
Davis puts it away. The Diamondbacks get a run on a couple of hits. They'll leave a man. We go to the night. It's 12 3 Marlins. Inning. Nine. Ten hits. Nineteen total hits. One of those nights, and that's one of those guys that's been doing a lot of the damage. One missed. Giancarlo Stanton. Boom. And just to show you that it wasn't a fluke. Boom. That was in the seventh inning. He missed it earlier. 13 home runs against National League West opponents this year by this guy, Giancarlo Stanton. Brad Ziegler on for the Diamondbacks. And the ground ball hit sharp. Oh, nice play, Elmo. And he draws and save it first. He pulled Wheeler off the bag, and it looked like he swiped and missed him. And that's what Lance Barrett saw. And he's he hustling down the line. Elmore just got a little bit lazy with this throw. He makes a nice play there, but then he just got lazy and flipped it across yeah. instead of threw it with some with some passion. Let's look here. Did he get him on the leg? I don't believe so. Nope. He missed him. Flat out missed him. So that'll go as an error on the shortstop, and that's one of the he makes a really nice play on that hard shot. But he let up on the throw yeah. and and then just kind of chicken wing the throw got a little lazy with it and it cost him an error. Well now Ziegler have an opportunity here to uh, maybe dial up a, a double play. We got a pinch hitter at the plate and this is Peterson Brian Peterson. Has he taken an opportunity to get some different players into the ball game in this one? This lopsided score. Peterson, a straight left-handed hitter. Ruggiano had a nice night, a single and a home run. For the Diamondbacks, it's been Saunders, Bergeson, Shaw, now Ziegler. Joe really had a rough night, Joe Saunders. Good change up there from Ziegler. This ball just never gets there. And Peterson a strikeout victim. And also, folks, we need you to come out to the ballpark. You know, you don't have to bring a date, but you might be you might meet some some gals. Or some guys, if you're a female, that's that's just just another reason to come on out. Yeah, when you come, you sit down. Yeah, there's some guys, all you single ladies out there. There's four handsome young men out there. To there you go. See, 
And when you when you come to the ballpark, you know, you're sitting next to somebody. You know, there's a couple of beautiful ladies there. Just shake hands with the person sitting next to you. Introduce yourself. There you go. Whether you're a Braves fan or a Diamondbacks <laughs> fan. Or a Sun Devil fan. Just, yeah, just come on out and hang out. Enjoy Major League Baseball. Do some texting. And we promise you, we promise you, if you come tomorrow, the game will be closer than it is today. That's a promise. Nice pitch there from Ziegler. Well, it's 12-3 here. I'm hoping it's a lot closer tomorrow. Oh, it will be. I guarantee it. And the Diamondbacks are on that plus side. Coming on, he won't get there in time. And that's a hit for Buck. How about Buck tonight? Double play first time up. Now he's got four hits. Let's update our Nissan Tech Score. What do we got? You're going on to the Legends Wall, according <laughs> to the fans. Well, I want to thank my children and my family for texting in. <laughs> Not much loving for Kurt or Maddie. Well, it's not surprising with Kurt and Maddie. You want to elaborate on that? Well, the other two guys are going up against, right? Yeah. Gracie I mean, and uh, RJ. Uh, that's my guy right there, though. But I think you know, him, you're just a big old yeah, favorite here. Him, him and Randy, him and Randy win win a lot of races, you know, with Gonzo. <laughs> I think I think that's just more the sympathy vote for me. How do you think Schilling would do in that race if he had? Uh, <laughs> I don't think he would do very well. <laughs> He's. There's a double play ball. Get up to Elmore. Faster throw to first. Leave it to Ziegler to get a double play ball. Yeah. His 14th as a reliever. And he pitches around an error in the inning. Last chance for the Diamondbacks. They need 11. Trucks. He did it with a glove and the arm here. As he gets an assist, Jason Kubel. Went out raised in the first inning, tried to stretch a double to a triple, and then gave the Diamondbacks a 1 0 lead in the bottom of the first. But that's been the good of it tonight for the Diamondbacks. And unfortunately, there's been too much Marlins. Kubel and the D backs trailing here. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, 12 to 3. Brian Peterson on. Pinch hit, stays in the game and left. Palmer's going to come up and bat here. In these games, the dugouts get emptied. Everybody, but just about everybody gets to play.
Bart Johnson and Elmore the same. If anybody gets on Nieves. Twenty Marlins hits on the night and ten came in that nine run fourth inning. It's it high. It's a pretty deep. Did he get enough? No. Stand at the warning train right in front of the fence. One away. The D-backs and Miller Lite will host a post-game concert featuring Roger Klein and the Peacemakers Saturday, August 25th. Concert's free with a ticket for that day's Diamondbacks Padres matchup. Get tickets by calling 602-514-8400. Log on to dbacks.com slash concert or visit your local quick trip for a special ticket offer from Miller Lite. Another fly ball for Stan. Two outs in the inning. That's the gold glove of Gerardo Parra's bobblehead. He's trying to rob a homer. He's gotten beat up a little bit out there, but it's still on the uh, padding. By the way, the last time Diamondback pitchers gave up 20 or more hits in a ball game, you have to go back to August 24th, 2005. Well, the Mets got him for 20 hits. So. Almost seven years to the date. The uh, no more. One for three tonight. Nice chance to keep this one going. They're still here and they're hoping for a monstrosity of a two out rally here in the ninth. <laughs> Treat for the kids out there that stayed through this. One nice goal. Second hit. And now Will Nieves will bat for the second time. Came in here, been playing well at home, but only hit a buzz saw tonight. Miami Marlins coming out of Denver and Coors Field, where they split four games. And Giancarlo Stan, who was on fire there, is on fire here now at Chase. Well, I would say just about all of them were on fire tonight. I mean, they peppered the ball around Chase Field. I mean, from one through nine. Solano, Reyes, and Lee each had two hits, scored five runs, and drove in at five runs in that nine run fourth inning. And now it's come down to a final strike in this game one ball, two strikes. Rally camp is still uh, boy. firmly entrenched on top of the head.
kinds of rally hats going there. That's a little different look. Got I like a pair that. of them. That's it. Good stuff, guys. He's growing a rally beard. <laughs> A little uncomfortable with that open shirt. <laughs> what? What's going on there? They should be looking for AT&T Park. <laughs> I like that look. Oh. Yeah, Get there you go. On. Put it back up there. He's going to end the ball game, Chip. Yeah. Allen strike first in this series as they bury the Diamondbacks here tonight to the tune of 12 to 3. So the Diamondbacks come home after that successful road trip. Their four game winning streak comes to an end. San Carlos stand with two more home runs tonight. And he leads the Marlins to a nine run victory on 20 hits in this ball game. Jody and Joe standing by. They got post game. Activity coming up next. Marlins beat the Diamondbacks. Burley beats Saunders 12-3 our final score.